Hello everyone, my name is Gabby, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review. This time, we're reviewing episode 21. Freezer arrives on Earth with his soldiers and is waiting for his revenge. Goku and Vegeta are still missing in action, training with Whis, so Freezer decides to send his soldiers on Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, Ten Shinhan, Roshi, and I guess Jaco. And they do surprisingly well. It turns out Freezer's soldiers kind of suck. Even Shasami, who Sorbet says is the strongest warrior in their army, seems to be no match for Gohan. Until Tagama blasts a hole through Shasami's chest in an attempt to take out Gohan. Gohan is recovered with the Sensu, while Tagama explains that he's become a lot stronger over the past few months, much stronger than Shasami. After all, he's been Frieza's training partner. Tagama asks for permission to fight them himself, which Frieza happily obliges. And as Tagama powers up, He's sensed by Goten and Trunks. They decide to see what's going on, and a familiar frog peers out of Jaco's ship. So, what did I like about this episode? Well, for one, the fight with Frieza's soldiers was a little bit different, but I liked that it focused a lot on the sort of character interactions. They really realized they could not do use, use the sort of same scale of the 1,000 soldiers as they did in the movie itself because they didn't have enough time and enough budget to animate like all that. So they decided to make it a lot sort of smaller scale. Now while there's still a thousand soldiers, it's more talking about like the characters themselves. So like for one, Krillin kind of almost has sort of like PTSD and is sort of like kind of getting a bit scared because he remembers that like when Frieza killed him again, and so he's sort of a bit nervous and stuff. And then, but then like everyone else kind of sort of cheers him up and gives him confidence again, being like Krillin, y you've dealt up with much worse. You can handle these guys, and then he does, and it's actually pretty cool. Also, I guess we just have to explain, to get this out of the way, Tagama. Tagama! So I didn't really explain it early on, but in Resurrection F the movie, Tagama was killed off unceremoniously just by Frieza randomly, but in this, they've kept him alive in this, in this retelling, and it's for a good reason it seems, because Tagama has been training with Frieza. Which, which, it's pretty awesome, because not only does this, this like sort of kills two birds in one stone, it's like, First of all, we kind of got a, now we're sort of getting a little bit of insight into Frieza's training, which seems to be just sort of beating Tagama half to death and then making Tagama like recover with the, those regeneration tank, tanks and then coming back the next day. And the other thing is, Tagama is apparently very strong now. According to Sorbet Scouter, he's stronger than the Ginyu Force, but exactly how strong he is, we don't exactly know. Doesn't really matter. Does does it really matter? Doesn't matter, he's just much stronger than Shisami and much stronger than Frieza's soldiers. But it's really interesting. This was something I wanted to see for a really long time. Just like having sort of sub, almost like mini bosses or like sub villains. These guys who are like a lot more powerful, but not as powerful. And then you can have like, oh, I just call them sort of the B team. The B team taking on the guys who aren't as powerful, but are still generally actual threats. So they're threats like relevant to their power levels. And it, it's sort of like, I think One Piece does this, and Dragon Ball Super is doing this. And that's awesome. That is awesome. Not only that, but also Goten and Trunks are actually sensing the battle and are actually coming to the fight. Which is another thing that was in, in Resurrection F, and that didn't make any sense that they see it, look, clearly couldn't sense what was going on, even though like the, everyone was like really, 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 really powerful by the end. They didn't sense it the entire time, but here it's like, they know it, they notice and they're actually coming over to the fight and it's like I was not expecting this retelling to start covering their plot holes. I was not expecting this at all. Basically, this whole turn of events, this major deviation from the movie, is like makes so much sense and is actually so cool. I'm surprised the movie didn't do this. Why did the movie kill off Takama? Why? Like I, I'm now I'm just wondering if like maybe this was supposed to be in the movie but they removed it from because of time constraints or something because actually for in the Japanese version of Resurrection F and home release they came with a like a book of some of the storyboards and in some of the initial storyboards Tagama was still alive during the fight with like all the soldiers so I'm wondering I'm just wondering if there were any sort of behind the scenes things like maybe this was always going to be in Resurrection F and maybe this was like an extended cut thing but then they just got rid of it because they realized they didn't need to do an extended cut because they just got Dragon Ball Super and that is essentially their extended cut. As for what I didn't like about this episode, god they're just taking Gohan fans for a ride right now. It's like Every time we think, every time you think that Gohan is going to do something, they screw it up somehow. 
Like they did that with Beerus, they sort of kind of foreshadowed him was they sort of gave him a little bit more build up than everyone else fighting Beerus, but then he got taken out in like literally two seconds. And this we was like, oh look, Gohan is going to like kick some ass with Shasami, it's gonna be really cool. Oh, and then Tagama blasts him through the chest. I'm not that pissed off at that. It's a bit it was a bit weird and I honestly don't really know why they did it, but whatever. Of course, the real big problem with Go for, for Gohan fans is his line. It's like, you know, oh, I haven't been training, but I can turn into a Super Saiyan, I think. And he's going to be a Super Saiyan. And that will be a bit annoying because they are flat out making him a lot weaker than what he used to be. I was going to rant about this, but I'm actually, I'm actually saving that because I'm really curious about, like... See, the problem with Resurrection F is they nerfed him, but there was no real reason for it because nothing about it was like he needed to be a Super Saiyan for that to all happen. But in this, in Dragon Ball Super, this is a retelling and there's going to be a lot more fighting next episode between like the B team and Takuma. So I'm just wondering what the whole Gohan is a Super Saiyan thing is supposed to accomplish. If it's supposed to accomplish anything. If it's just there for no reason, I will still get annoyed because this is kind of annoying actively making characters weaker who aren't Goku and Vegeta as opposed to just making them stronger. You're making them stronger and you're making them weaker. It's like, geez, how big do you want the gap to be? Also, because of the whole like sort of Tagama taking Shasami's role, it sort of makes Shasami feel a little superfluous. Like we didn't even know how strong he was. We just knew he was a little bit stronger because Sorbet said he was. And of course the fight yeah, had nothing on the fight with in, in Resurrection F with the fight with the Thousand Fruits of Soldiers. There was no real sense of scale there. It felt like like everyone like I mean, first of all, the characters in the background were just sort of all static most of the time, all the soldiers in the background. Second of all, you know, there was a lot of sort of repeated frames and everything was really close up, so you couldn't it didn't really feel like there was a sense of scale here. So next episode, more deviations. Like, geez, we're getting or well, we're getting Targama showing up, Targama apparently kicking ass. Go, go tanks, go tanks showing up, and Ginyu, yeah, Ginyu, no, no, that wasn't, that was not a joke, we all thought that was a joke when we heard that was the name of an episode, but Ginyu was showing up, it's not a joke, I have no idea why he's there, I, I literally have no idea, but it's definitely something that's really interesting. So yeah, Dragon Ball Super episode 21 was that was cool. So technically when you look at the episode, it wasn't that amazing. The animation was kind of whatever. There was some, sometimes it was like repeated frames even I could notice. And it, the episode itself wasn't that like good in terms of quality, but the things that they had in there, this is the biggest deviation Dragon Ball Super has done from the source material since like, since for as, like, as long as I can, I can actually think, this is the biggest deviation they've done so far. It's so cool. And now I'm watching going into next episode 22, and I have no idea what's going to happen. It's amazing. Okay, okay, maybe it's not, um, maybe I'm over-exaggerating a little, but for, after all, for us, people who've been watching every week and we've just been seeing things that we've seen already, this is something new, and this is great. I mean, deviations by themselves aren't necessarily the best, but a lot of people didn't really like Resurrection F. So the fact that they are doing different things, I think that is pleasing a lot of people. So I'm going into episode 22 pretty much completely blind, so I am so excited for that. I am really excited to see what yeah, what they're changing and why and if this is going to like actually mean anything in the end. So this is Gabby signing out and I'll see you all next week. Bye guys.